In somewhat surprising news, the Ninth Circuit struck down an Oregon law that prohibited undercover or secret recordings. So that's pretty interesting. Many states have a wiretapping law, which not only extends to phone conversations, but also extends to real life conversations about when those conversations can be recorded or not. And some states have a one party consent rule, and some states have a two party consent rule. In states that have a one party consent rule, anyone who's on the call or in the conversation, as the case may be, can record it. So I can record a conversation with you, even if you don't know about it, because obviously I am a party to the conversation. So I give consent to myself in a one party consent state. Some states are like, nah, that's wiretapping, even if it you know doesn't necessarily involve a wire. Some states call it different things, but let's just call it wiretapping and make our lives simple. Anyway, so Oregon had some version of this law that prohibited these secret recordings. You couldn't record someone without letting them know, but Oregon just got struck down by the Ninth Circuit somewhat surprisingly. So let's learn a little bit more about this. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which of course governs the entire Western United States. So obviously this decision would extend not only to Oregon, but all the states within the Ninth Circuit one would imagine because we're doing federal law principles. So this would be the law now in basically the entire West Coast of the United States. So that's a lot of territory has struck down a decades-old Oregon law that prohibited recording in-person conversations without informing everyone involved. State officials who had defended the prohibition in court decried the ruling as a blow to Oregon's privacy and said they were considering appeal. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I don't really see that happening. I, I suppose you could ask for en banc to the Ninth Circuit, maybe. I don't know what the attitude of the entire Ninth Circuit would be. Maybe they will do an en banc. But if you're thinking Supreme Court, I, I don't think so. So, yeah, you can try to ask for an en banc and see if you can get the entire Ninth Circuit to render an opinion. So we'll see how that goes. If the decision stands, the Oregon legislature should act swiftly to consider whether to fix our law to reinstate some protections against secretly recording conversations, said a spokesman for the Oregon Department of Justice. Writing for the majority, the U.S. Circuit Judge Sandra Ikuka, Ikuta said such surreptitious recordings, whether audio or visual, are themselves a form of constitutionally protected speech. Writing, we conclude that Oregon's law is a content-based restriction that violates First Amendment right to free speech and therefore invalid on its face. That is a strange rationale to my mind. I might have to read that decision and, and look at it in more depth, to be honest, because I'm not really sure that recording in and of itself can really be thought of as speech. That seems like more like an action, right? How is recording in and of itself speech? I, I mean, you can obviously record speech into a microphone, but the act of recording seems more act-based than speech-based because we have to look at that distinction like between speech and action, right? And this seems like more action-based. So to say that recording is in and of itself a First Amendment right seems like a slightly strange rationale. So I might have to look at that in more detail and see if I'm missing something, which maybe I am. Before the reversal, Oregon was only one of five states that banned recording face-to-face -face conversations made in public when there is no reasonable expectation of privacy without the consent of all involved. So, you know, whether you record someone in a situation in which you have an expectation of privacy, like it's just the two of you in some room somewhere, versus having a conversation, you know, in an open park or something, could be viewed differently, right? If you're having a conversation, you know, at a dinner table, in a restaurant, then there's no particular expectation of privacy because of course, anyone could overhear you. So that might be a rationale versus, you know, recording surreptitiously if you were, you know, only two people and you went into a room for the purpose of having the conversation. But in any case, it looks like these in-person recordings are, are legal in any event. The ban dates back to 1955, half a century before cell phones and other devices made unannounced recordings far more commonplace. The law included exceptions for government-run meetings and trials, large rallies, sporting events, news conferences and classrooms, as well as filming the police. Monday's ruling does not affect the recordings of phone call. Oregon remains a one-party consent state for conversations made over the phone, meaning one person over a phone call can record it. So Oregon, for whatever reason, drew a distinction between phone calls and in-person conversations, and kind of the backwards of the way you might think that it would do if you were going to make this distinction. 
right? You would think maybe that telephone calls would have a greater expectation of privacy as a general matter than, for example, an in-person conversation, right? Phone calls are typically one-to-one, and typically, you know, there's there's more of an expectation that the person you're talking to is the only person listening, right? People in general might be able to hear one side of the conversation as they're passing by, but they can't hear both people, you know, typically. Even if you have a cell phone in public, you know, unless you have a speakerphone on, but that isn't the expectation, right? So if you were making the distinction, you would say, or you would think you would say, that the cell phone conversations are more presumed to be private, and therefore the consent is required because the implied consent that might be present within person is not there, right? There's implied consent by having a conversation in public that anyone could hear it. But Oregon, for whatever reason, kind of made the decision the other way around of what you might expect if you were doing this from first principles, which is odd. So Oregon had said, yeah, recording over the phone, totally fine. Recording in person, not so much. Not quite sure why they made that decision, but they did. In any case, because Oregon was already a one-party consent state for the phone, the court case doesn't speak to that issue because there's nothing to decide, right? Oregon already said recordings over the phone are super fine, so the court didn't speak to that issue. But to the extent that any state in the Ninth Circuit makes recordings over the phone two-party, I'm not clear why this case wouldn't apply to such a state. So I don't know whether or not any state within the Ninth Circuit is a two-party consent state. In fact, I do know for a fact that California is two-party. I know that for a fact now that I'm thinking about it. California is a two-party consent state. I know that for a fact. So if recording in public is a First Amendment right, it's not clear why this decision wouldn't speak to California, right? So this case itself doesn't deal with cell phones or telephone calls. Because as to Oregon, there was nothing to decide. So of course, the court doesn't speak to it because it would be dicta even if they did, right? It would be it would be irrelevant to the issue. So the court says, okay, recording in person is a First Amendment right, and you don't need two-party consent. Okay, if that's true, then why would California's two-party consent rule as it relates to telephones be valid? Because if there's a First Amendment right to record in public, Generally, why would it not apply to cell phones? So I can definitely see California's two-party consent rule being challenged in the future on this issue because, yeah, that doesn't, I'm not quite sure that you can say this as to in-person, but not also say it as, as the phone if we're rooting it in the First Amendment interest. So I'm not quite sure how that would work, but that's a case for another time. Project Veritas and its then leader, James O'Keefe, had sued Oregon. And, the, and a county district attorney over the law arguing the ban would prevent them from secretly recording government employees or left-wing protesters. So pretty interesting, I suppose, that James O'Keefe over here is the base. Even more surprising than the Ninth Circuit rule. The Ninth Circuit rule for James O'Keefe? I mean, you don't see that coming every day, right? The Ninth Circuit apparently fans of James O'Keefe. Who knew, man? Wow. So the fact that James O'Keefe in particular got this ruling is even more surprising, but that's where we are. O'Keefe said in a statement he intends to use hidden cameras so allies with his new group can expose wrongdoing. Oregon prosecutors infrequently brought challenges, which, you know, yeah. So you can also think a selective prosecution in the future, right? If they don't bring, pro if they don't bring prosecutions in general and just reserve it for James, right? Then you have a selective prosecution due process problem. A spokesperson pointed to the district attorney's internal training, which says states rarely land on prosecutor desk and recommends notifying a supervisor before filing. Hmm. That sounds like that's, that's ripe for abuse. So if not First Amendment, then due process comes a little bit more into mind because this is so discretionary, we're only going to use it against our political enemies, which is, a, yeah, that's a problem. But we rooted it in the First Amendment, not due process, but that's okay. Thus, that brings us to the end of this case in the Ninth Circuit, which is very interesting as to the issue decided and also issues to be decided in the future. The Ninth Circuit rules that Oregon's ban on recording surreptitiously in public, in real life at least, let's go it that way, surreptitiously recording in real life is unconstitutional under the First Amendment, which seems like a strange rationale. And if it's true, 
that recording is a vi that that making it illegal to record is a violation of the First Amendment. One would wonder how California's two-party consent rule, as it relates to telephone conversations, will remain in place. So it'll be interesting to see see if this gets kicked up to the Ninth Circuit on Bonk. I don't really see the U.S. Supreme Court getting involved in this. Assuming this decision stands, it will be definitely interesting to see how this applies to California in the future. But at least for a moment, that brings us to the end of the discussion of this story.